Transcribed. Flying's the way to travel, and the way to fly is TWA, Trans World Airlines. Presenting Cary Grant and Betsy Drake as Mr. and Mrs. Blanding in a new series based on Eric Hodgins' best-selling novel, Mr. Blanding's Builds His Dream House and Blanding's Way. Did you know that TWA flies the world's largest fleet of constellations and offers luxury constellation service all the way from San Francisco to Bombay, India? You love to fly high up in the sky. You ride the airways, star-reached airways. Smoother and swifter, flying the way. And the best way to fly, D-double-U-A. Mr. and Mrs. Blanding, starring Cary Grant and Betsy Drake, with Gail Gordon as Bill Cole. When Jim and Muriel Blanding finally moved into their new home in the country, everything was ready. That's what the architect said, and the contractor, and the landscaper. Of course, they didn't mention that the well would cave in, and it did, that the doors wouldn't open, and they didn't, or that the sprinkler system wouldn't sprinkle, which it doesn't. <laughs> Through all these things, Jim's patience bore up remarkably well. But last week came the breaking point. It started on Monday when Mr. Jenkins, the handyman, appeared and said, Oh, Mr. Blanding, remember them special rose bushes we bought to put alongside the driveway? Yes. Remember you telling Miss Blanding's to back the car out herself this morning? Yes. Where do you want to buy the new rose bushes? <laughs> On Tuesday, Mr. Jenkins' opening gambit was... Oh, Mr. Blanding, remember that spot in the retaining wall? He said I'd better brace it up or it'd break through. Yes. I didn't. It did. <laughs> and then on Wednesday... Oh, Mr. Blanding, recollect I warned you if that elm tree blew down, she'd smash the greenhouse. Don't tell me that... Nope, she didn't. Well, that's a relief. Yeah, hit the garage instead. <laughs> on Thursday, Jim avoided Mr. Jenkins. But as he was leaving the house on his way to work, his wife, Muriel, said... Oh, Mr. Blanding. Oh, Muriel, Muriel, I'm not in the mood for bucolic humor. Sorry, dear, but there's something you have to take care of. Oh, uh, what is it this time? Did that valve break off on the washing machine? Did the thermostat go wonky on the hot water heater? Or did the sink stop up? Yes. <laughs> Jim Jim, I'm not trying to bring up unpleasant things I just mm. mentioned it So you could pick up the parts on the way past the hardware store Oh You'll be passing the hardware store anyway I will? On your way to the bank to pay the mortgage Oh yes, the mortgage Now there's a pleasant thought Well, you don't have to pay the mortgage, you know Of course, they'll take the house away from you Well, that's about as minor a threat as I've ever heard What? <clears throat> I tell you, Muriel, the way I feel right now, if it weren't that you and the kids are so crazy about this place, I'd get out from under. I'd put it up for sale tomorrow. If it weren't for... Well, we don't want to stand in your way. If that's the way you feel, you can put it up for sale today. Muriel, you don't mean that. I mean it as much as you meant it. Oh, I meant it all right. Then so do I. All right, then I will put it up for sale. All right, go ahead. All right. All right. All right. Well? Well? All right. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm going now. I know. I'm going to put the house up for sale. I know. Today. Yes. Well, Muriel, you don't. Oh, all right. Goodbye. Oh, Jim. Something wrong, Miss Landing? You didn't kiss me goodbye. Oh, does he always kiss you goodbye? Not always. But today, when he didn't do it, he didn't do it like he meant not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good morning, Mr. Martin. How's the real estate business? Why, hello there, Mr. Blandings. Uh, what brings you in? Well, I, I want to talk about some property. Uh-huh. Well, now, it might be I could help you. Of course, prices are pretty high now. This is a seller's market. Oh, you don't understand. I'm not buying. I want to sell. Oh, oh. Well, now, it might be I could help you. Of course, the price has got to be low. 
<laughs> this is a, a buyer's market, you know, and... Uh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought this was a seller's market. Why? You said it was. When? Just a minute ago. Well, funny, I was in the same room and I didn't hear a thing. <laughs> Uh, what's this property you want to sell? Uh, not your lovely little place, I trust. Well, yes. Hmm. <laughs> That's a shame. Yes. Yes, it is. I hate to part with it. Well, don't worry. It's not likely too like you was going to come along. Now, now, just a minute. That isn't the way you talked when I bought the house. No? No. You described it as a cozy haven of bliss, nestled in nature's bosom, kissed by the sun and cradled by the moon. I said that? Yes. <laughs> oh, Reader's Digest, meet your new most unforgettable character. <laughs> well, now, let's get down to business. Uh, how much you want for the play? Well, I figure I've got about 38000 in it right now. And 38000 Hey, you were a juicy one, weren't you? <laughs> yes, Mr. Martin. I was a doll. Now, I'm willing to take just what I have in it for a quick deal. Thirty-eight thousand. Oh, no, no, Mr. Blandings, you're forgetting what higher taxes have done to the market. All right, thirty-seven thousand. Thirty-seven thousand? With these tight credit controls? Thirty-six thousand, then. Not many buyers in these unsettled times. Thirty-five. Cost of living index is going up all the time. Thirty... Say, listen, how far do we go like this? <laughs> Well, sir, I got good reasons down to 30, and I can make them up down to 25. <laughs> well, 35 is my rock-bottom price. Now, take it or leave it. Well, it, it, that's it. That's it. You want to stay with that fantastic price? Try right with me. Don't try to sway me. If I can't get my price, just forget it. Understand? Yes, I understand. Bye, Mr. Blanning. Goodbye. My. I'm afraid he's no longer juicy. <laughs> Oh, Jim, is that you? Yes, it's me. Come in here, dear, and see the new curtains. The what? What? Muriel, it sounded as if you said something about new curtains. I did. Aren't they beautiful? Well, yes, but obviously we're not going to keep them. Why? I thought we agreed to sell the house. Oh, oh, that was this morning. Muriel, I put the house up for sale. You what? Are you backing down? No, no. I meant it as much as you did. Well, that's all right, then. Where are you going? Not to look at my azaleas. Why bother? Why bother? I planted those myself. If I don't look after them, who will? The new owner. Oh, yeah, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> well, I think I'll go out and look at them anyway. Call me when dinner's ready. All right. Oh, darn, I wish that... Hmm. Operator, may I have New York, please? Circle 4, 9929. Hello? Bill? Muriel, what a nice surprise. I was just thinking about you. Bill, I'm in trouble. I need your help. As a friend and as a lawyer. Is it about Jim? Well, yes. What's the idiot up to? What's he done to you? He's put the house up for sale. He what? You're joking. No, I'm not. Now, what can I do about it? Well, the property's half yours. If you don't want to sell it, tell him not to sell it. I can't. Why not? Because I told him to sell it. Why? So he wouldn't think I didn't want him to sell it. Now... You, you want him to sell it? No. Oh, then you don't want him to sell it. That's right. So you told him to sell it? Certainly. Muriel, you jiggle your receiver and I'll jiggle mine. <laughs> Bill, it's perfectly clear. Well, I'll, I'll try to get it straight. Now, let me see. The party of the first part opposed the transaction and as a consequence thereof felt obligated to give approbation to the party of the second part. No, no, it doesn't help even when I simplify it. <laughs> well, the important thing is I don't want anyone else to get our house. I just couldn't stand it. Well, don't worry. I doubt if Jim wants to part with it either. Anyway, I'll, I'll have a talk with him tomorrow and straighten it out, okay? Okay, and thanks, Bill. Goodbye. <laughs> mm, they just look right nice, don't they, Mr. Blanding? Eh? Oh, hello, Mr. Jenkins. Yeah, funny, they never look better. Mm, got that retaining wall fixed all ship shape. Really? The garage ain't as bad as the thought. 
That things are working out pretty good. Just like they usually do. Oh, that's nice. Uh, maybe it'll help the sale. Sale of what? You might as well know, Mr. Jenkins. I put this place up for sale with the real estate man today. Oh, I didn't know you wanted to sell. I don't. Oh? Oh, you're being forced to sell, eh? No. Oh. Uh, mm. Sounds a little silly, I guess, huh? Oh, oh, no, no, not to me. Of course, that don't mean much. I'm at that age when my mind starts to wander, too. <laughs> you know something, Mr. Jenkins? You hit the nail on the head. I must have been out of my mind. I'm going in and talk to Muriel. I'm going to admit to her that I was wrong, and I'm going to... Oh, Jim! Oh, Muriel, I've been a fool. I know, dear, but this is important. <laughs> Muriel, listen to me. I don't want to sell the house. You what? I said I don't want to sell the house. And you don't want to sell the house either. I don't know what got into me. I... Muriel, what's the matter? Oh, Jim, why didn't you say this before? Before what? Before Mr. Martin phoned. He's got a couple coming all the way from New York to look at the house. And if they like it, they're going to move right in. What? Mr. Blanding, fall to the greenhouse. The garage won't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, one of the most important things about being an American is that you have freedom of choice. Freedom to choose your occupation, to choose the automobile you drive, the breakfast food you eat, the schools your children attend, the church where you worship. America was founded on this principle, and it's inspired a healthy competition among the many industries who serve you. Their constant effort to improve their service in order that they may deserve your choice has given our country the highest standard of living that history has ever known. Look what's happened in air transportation. The Civil Aeronautics Act of 1938 not only regulated air commerce, but provided that there should be competition in keeping with the sound development of an air transportation system for commerce, the mail service, and national defense. Today, our many domestic scheduled airlines stand ready to serve you within the United States and are striving to provide you the best in service and convenient schedules. And this American principle doesn't end at our nation's borders either. Twelve United States airlines fly to foreign countries. At this very moment, U.S. airliners are streaking through the skies to every part of the globe. And they carry not only passengers and cargo, but they also bear the emblem of free enterprise, the stars and stripes, and the principles of freedom and competition for which our flag stands and which the entire world can only envy. And so today, TWA is proud to be a part of the scheduled U.S. airline, that living symbol of free enterprise, as they carry our priceless heritage to the four corners of the world. And now the second act of Mr. and Mrs. Blanding, starring Cary Grant and Betsy Drake. As you all know, trouble comes in various forms. For Jim and Muriel Blandings, it is arriving in a fiery red Cadillac, complete with twin horns, twin tailpipes, and leopard skin upholstery. Meet, if you will, Herman and Gladys Davis, or as they call themselves, Bunny and Pop. <laughs> Wonderful out here in the country. Take a breath, Popsy. Go on. I'm breathing, I'm breathing. <laughs> oh, to be in England now the lilacs are in bloom. Ah. I know it don't fit, but it's the only line I know with the flower in it. Cute, aren't they? They are the prospective purchasers of the Blanding's Dream House. And what of the hosts and hostess at this impending soiree? Well, they're a little nervous. Jim, come here to the window. Look at that car. Hmm. I wonder if the Taj Mahal has been reported missing. <laughs> here they come. Oh, darling, I'm worried. 
they don't look like the kind of people who can be talked out of things. Right, well, don't be subtle. Now, if we're going to tell them lies, make no whoppers. What do you mean? Well, don't just say the house is drafty. Cough. And don't just point to the DDT. Scratch. <laughs> oh, you don't have to go that far, but... Uh, oh, here we go. Do your best. I'll try. <clears throat> well, how do you do? Welcome to Mortgage Manor on Taxation Hill. <laughs> I'm Jim Blandy. Hi, hi, I'm, uh, I'm Davis. This is my, uh, my girlfriend, Bunny. I'm your wife. Please, I'm not well. I'm <laughs> <laughs> very pleased to meet you. Uh, Muriel, this is Mr. and Mrs. Davis, my wife. Hiya, honey. You really like your hair that way? <laughs> Bunny, for crying out loud, stop with them corny compliments, will you? <laughs> we, uh, we come to see the house. Oh, yes, of course. Well, let's get started. Now, supposing I show you the things a man likes to see, Mr. Davis, and Mrs. Blandings can show, uh, uh, uh Bunny around. Oh, that'll be keen. Okie doke, hon. I mean, Mrs. Blandings. Okie doke, hon. Right this way. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Hey, hey, them, them two, they, they hit it right off like, uh, like, uh, uh peas in a pod, huh? bugs in a rug, birds of a feather. Ah. <laughs> Take your pick. Take... Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, thanks. I'll, uh... Say, you, you sure got some nice place here. I think I'm going to like it. Oh, you will. You'll mm. love every weed in the lawn, every gopher hole in the driveway, every termite in the cellar, and every crack on every floor. Oh, gee, you said that pretty. <laughs> you a writer or something? Mm. No. This is going to be tougher than I thought. Now, let me get the lay of the house here. Let's see. You've got a, a living room, a dining room, and a den downstairs. Uh, what's uh, upstairs? Four bedrooms. Oh, you've got four bedrooms. Well, that's nice. There's uh, how many baths? How many what? How many baths? Hey, that's it. <laughs> that's what? Mr. Davis, did you ever have the feeling there was something missing and you couldn't quite put your feet on it? <laughs> Oh, holy smoke, you mean to tell I me... I need to... to tell you almost anything. Come on. Is this your bedroom? Mm-hmm. My, it certainly is a chick. Of course, it needs pepping up. Pepping up? Wait till you see how I fix up this room. Red drapes with velvet sashes, shag rugs, a Hollywood bed with satin spreads, and stuffed dolls. Don't you just love stuffed dolls? I loathe them. Me too. <laughs> I guess we're both little girls at heart. Um, say, not that I'm the kind that plays around, but are there any cute fellas in the neighborhood? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, uh, for instance, uh, do you have your groceries delivered? Yes. What's he like, hon? Tall, dark? He's 13 and small for his age. <laughs> wants to move out here. Hey, what do you kids do out here to keep from going stir-crazy? <laughs> oh, we go for nice long walks and we garden. And of course, nights when Jim can't get home, I read. Nights when what? Well, nights when Popsy, um, I mean Mr. Davis, misses the train, he'll have to stay in town all night. Suddenly, it helps me to move out here. Well, I'll fix his little red wagon. Now, Blandings, I ain't saying I'm sold on a house, you see, but just in case we do make a deal, you and me. Now, why should we shell out good dough to this real estate guy? Hmm? Mr. Davis, are you suggesting we circumvent the broker? <laughs> oh, heavens, no. <laughs> Let's just cut them out. <laughs> well, I... I don't know. <clears throat> I'm afraid I couldn't consider anything like that. Well, it's just an idea. You can forget it, but... Uh, say, listen, Mac... Um, yeah? I know that I don't look like the kind of a guy that would be interested, but... Uh, are there any chicks around here? <laughs> chicks? So there you are. Herman, I want to talk to you. I'm not finished about the house. Listen, if you live here, it ain't going to be with me. And don't say what you're thinking. So 
Come on. Well, all right. Hey, look, I'm sorry, folks. I'm afraid we decided not to take it. All right, all right. But it was very nice to have met you. Okie doke, hun? Okie doke. Hmm. Well, that's a relief. Hello? Oh, Mr. Blandings, uh, this is Martin, the real estate agent. Oh, Mr. Martin, I was just about to call you. The Davises were here. Well, don't tell me you sold in the house. Please don't tell me you sold in the house. I don't get it, but you haven't a fear in the world. I didn't sell it to them, and I'm not selling it to anybody. Well, you won't have to because I just did. What? Well, I came in from New York, bought the house sight unseen. I've got the money for the option right here on my desk. Mr. Martin, don't move. I'm on my way down there right now. Muriel, everything is not okie doke Mr. Martin. Uh, uh, well, Mr. Blanding. <laughs> Come to congratulate me. Hey, you're shaking. You haven't even got hold of my hand. <laughs> Mr. Martin, I want you to tear up that option. Well, sorry, Mr. Blanding. The man paid the money down. The house belongs to him. You, you want it back? You got to buy it back. How much are you willing to pay? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Now, well, all right. How much did you sell the house for? 35000 Then I'll pay 35000 Oh, Mr. Blandings, I couldn't stay in business that way. <laughs> well, then, all right. What would you consider fair? 50000 What? Another one? 40000 40, 40. But he bought it an hour ago for thirty-five. Well, Mr. Blandings, just because the man got it for a steal, it isn't nice for you to take advantage of it. <laughs> Personally, I think 40's a, a, a pretty good price. You would. You better snap it up while you got the chance. Market's booming. <laughs> Market's booming? What happened to the higher taxes, unsettled times, tightened credit controls? Oh, Mr. Blanding, surely you don't take stock in those wild rumors. <laughs> <laughs> wild rumors? Why, that's what you told me right here in this office. When? This morning. Well, funny, I was here then. I didn't hear a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm going to see my lawyer. Muriel, Muriel, listen. I'm taking the station wagon to New York to see Bill Cole. See you tonight, dear. All right, sweet. <laughs> Bill. Back so soon, sweet? <laughs> Bill, am I glad to see you. Some scheming, unprincipled vulture is taking an option on my house. Let's go inside where we can talk. Huh? Now, this viper is trying to... Hey, 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 go easy on that door. Huh? Oh, yeah. Bill, this monster has the nerve to think he can hold me up. Jim, oh, Jim, oh. your feet are muddy. You're tracking all over my carpet. Oh, I didn't know that. Bill, what I want you to do... Please, please, is... uh, take off your shoes. Oh, for the, for the love of heaven, all right. Now, look, you've got to find out who this blackguard is. I suppose you know you knocked down three of my rose bushes driving in here. <laughs> rose bushes? Why in the name of heaven are you... Bill Cole. You may call me Squire Cole. <laughs> so you were the one that... Oh, I get it. Bill, you took the option to save the house from me. You're a real pal. I like you, too. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I want you and Muriel to come up and visit often. <laughs> Bill, let's not kid around. Now, come on, give me that option so I can tear it up. I can't. I sold it. You what? Oh, now, don't get excited. I sold it to Muriel. I don't care who you... you... Oh, Bill, you are a pal after all. Oh, how can I thank you? Let me shake your hand. Oh, no, 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 that's not necessary. You can just grovel at my feet. <laughs> Are you sure you wouldn't like a Hollywood bed with a satin spread and stuffed dolls? Of course not. I like it just the way it is. I love you, Jim. Huh? Nothing. Shall I turn off the lights? Go ahead. Oh, wasn't it nice of Bill to give me back the option? Oh, it sure was. He's one in a... Hey, wait a minute. Hmm? Huh? What do you mean, Bill gave it back? He told me he sold it to you. Oh, oh, well, it was his idea of a business deal. We just exchanged favors, that's all. What kind of a favor? Just a little one. Muriel. At least it seems little enough to me. Muriel! So I sewed the button on his shirt. What were you saying, dear? <laughs> nothing, nothing. Good night, Popsy. Good night, Bunny. <laughs>
Terry Grant and Betsy Drake will be back with us in just a moment. Friends, did you know that TWA is the only airline that goes all the way across the U.S. and overseas to Europe, the Middle East, and India? Yes, you can board a TWA plane in 60 cities in the United States and fly to London, Paris, Rome, and other world centers abroad. And say, just ask anyone who travels a lot, and you'll find out that this one airline service is mighty important. It means you buy only one ticket. You enjoy the same courteous service all the way, and you don't have to worry about complicated connections. So fly the finest. Fly TWA, Trans World Airlines. Next time you plan a trip for business or pleasure, see your friendly travel agent. Or call your nearest TWA office. You love to fly high up in the sky. You ride the airways, starish airways. Smoother and swifter, flying so well. And the best way to fly, TWA. Here again are Cary Grant and Betsy Drake. Hasn't this been a day, though? Oh, it has indeed. And speaking of Popsy and Bunny, did you know that TWA has 32,000 miles of routes across the United States and overseas? They fly from San Francisco all the way to Bombay, India. Did you know that? Of course, but what's that got to do with Popsy and Bunny? Who said anything about them? You did. When? Just a moment ago. Funny, I was in the same room. I didn't hear a thing. <laughs> Good night, dear. Good night, everybody. Tune in next week, same time, same station, for Mr. and Mrs. Blanding, starring Cary Grant and Betsy Drake, brought to you by Transworld Airlines. Across the U.S. and overseas, you can depend on TWA. <laughs> Betsy Drake appeared for the courtesy of RKO Pictures and David O. Selznick. Watch for the next Selznick release, Gypsy Blood, starring Jennifer Jones and produced in Technicolor. Bill Cole was played by Gail Gordon. Others in our cast were Sandra Gould, Dick Ryan, Jim Backus, and Sheldon Leonard. Tonight's show is written by Charles Stewart and Mort Lachman, directed by Warren Lewis, and transcribed in Hollywood. Don Stanley speaking. <laughs> Next, it's Fred Allen on The Big Show. More good times on NBC.